Hey guys, today I'm going to explain the uh, design of short columns. It's going to be square or rectangular columns plus circular columns, and we're going to see tight columns or spiral reinforced columns. Usually, spiral reinforced columns are for circular columns, however, it's not necessary. In circular columns, sometimes we may use ties, and I'm going to tell you what are the ties, what are what's the spiral, spiral, and all of that. So, our topic is short columns. You know by definition, when I say column, it's an axially loaded member. Sometimes you will see the chapter in the book, is designed with axially loaded comma. Okay. Axially loaded members, and that's a column. Okay. Any member that's axially loaded is a column. Okay. Let's We're trying to calculate what's Bn. What's Bn? What's the nominal capacity of a column? Okay. Then we will have P ultimate from structural analysis. Then if we are designing, we're trying to have P ultimate, the design philosophy, less or equal PPN, or PPM, which is the nominal times a strength reduction factor, greater or equal P ultimate. In a column cross section, what you will see? Typical cross section, let's say, that's concrete, reinforced with bars. Any column must have a bar on at each corner. You must have one bar at each corner. Okay. So these are the bars, and they are here. And this is a typical cover. Depend on the exposure. If the exposure is fine, no, sul no sulfates, nothing, everything is fine, it depends on the maximum aggregate size. Okay, copy. Those columns are laterally <coughs> supported with ties or lateral support for the reinforcement. So you will see a tie. This is not for shear. I'll tell you why. We have this thing. So you will see ties. at a given spacing, which we will design, or we will learn today. So this is the tie. These are the longitudinal steel. And this is the cross-section. This is the cross-section. Okay, so if you have a column, cast a column, and take it to the lab, and crush that column, okay, and see what's the strength. Basically, at failure, what materials or what's contributed to the strength? What do we have in there? Axially, this is conversion. This is axial force. It will cause axial stress. Straightforward. The stress will be P over A if you have concrete only. But now you have reinforcement. The steel will share part of the load or it will give a strength. So the strength of the column here will come from what? Concrete and steel. The longitudinal steel. The lateral ties, I'll tell you why we have them in a minute. Okay? For confinement, mainly for confinement. We're trying to confine this core area in the middle. Not only that, I'm gonna again, we're gonna start with that. Usually this spacing is designed such that the column will give you its strength before buckling of the bars. Remember those bars are in compression. They will buckle. If this spacing between the ties is big, the bar will buckle before you develop the full capacity of the column. So the specification took that into consideration from experimental testing. The, the, the specification that we have for the spacing between the ties will ensure that the column will develop its capacity before this one buckles. It means the bar will yield before it buckles. <coughs> okay? So let's see again. Now, whenever you, as I showed you, what do you have in there that's contribute, that will contribute to the strength? So Pn, the nominal, it will come from what? Again, as I said, from the concrete, right? 
contribution from concrete plus contribution of from steel. The axial strength from concrete, the axial strength from the bath. You may have four, you may have six, you may have 20, whatever number. Okay? So, what's the contribution, what's the axial strength of concrete? Axial strength, okay, that's, that's a prime C. The strength, not the stress. I mean, how much load is going to give you? You're saying the strength, which is F prime C, times the area, right? So if this is the area of concrete times, it's not F prime C, it's the stress at failure in the concrete. We're going to say, when the concrete fails, how much the stress is? Good? Plus. How much the steel bars will give you? Remember, this is direct conversion. AS of Y. That's area of steel times of Y. Where we get of Y from? We ensure that the column will not fail before the bars develop of Y. If it's pure axially loaded, that's the name, as I said, for column. That's ensured by that, no buckling. No buckling. The ties will ensure that. Good? So it's AS of Y. Now, what's the area of, before I go into the area of concrete, remember, look, now the stress distribution on the cross section will be kind of nonlinear. Some areas will be stressed more. Right? This is a stress guy, there's a stress here, you are applying a stress. Okay, the cross section. This stress will not be like average like that. There will be some kind of nonlinearity. Remember when we try to find the average stress, we multiply F prime C by something, right? What is it? How much do you think? 0.85. 0.85. So the stress at ultimate will be 0.85 F prime C. Okay? 0.85 F prime C. What's the area of concrete? If this is B, guys, if this is H and B, by definition, before we go there, by definition, A gross, by definition, in reinforced concrete, when it's used by the ACI code, it means the area of concrete as a gross, without including the steel. So A gross, by definition, usually, or most of the time, is BH. So I'm going to say, what's the area of steel now? It's going to say A gross. Is it A gross? It's not. Is it A gross? There are some bars. So it's A gross minus AS. That's the strength of the contribution to the nominal capacity of this column coming from the concrete. Plus AS of Y. That's your PN. That's what you expect when you go over there and crush this column. Okay? That's when you, what you expect when you crush the column. Now, when we design, when we design for PN, now let's put the strength reduction factor according to the code. So we have always the strength, this is the nominal capacity. The strength is, <coughs> it's phi pn. <laughs> Good. The first one here, I'm going to write for here, it will be for tight columns. And I will have another one for spirally Reinforced columns. What are we talking about here? The ties, the confinement. Are you providing ties or continuous spiral? The ties are just stirrups. Just stirrups, independent one at certain distances. Like the one we use for shear reinforcement. When I say continuous spiral or spiral reinforcement, 
you will have a continuation, okay, like a spring. Okay, and usually the distance between the each round or each turn, this distance is very small. The maximum you are allowed to is three inch. The minimum you can close them is one inch. I'm gonna write this for you. But it's continuous confinement. That's when I say spiral. Okay, have you seen something like this so far? Have you seen something called tide or spiral so far? Don't answer. Have you seen something like that? Yeah. Where? In uh, the P. Remember when I draw for you the strength induction factor? Remember when if it's the strain in the steel greater or equal to 0.005 for beam design, the fee is 0.9. Then I drew the transition curve when the strain decreases. Right? Then we said, okay, this is spiral, this is tight. <coughs> when you reach 0.002, which is the yield strain in steel, right? We said it stops at 0.75 for spiral reinforced column or at 0.65 for tight column. We said below this one is column action. After this one, we start talking about beam action, remember? So for tight columns, what's the phi factor? Again, this is phi times whatever we have in here. So it's going to be, for tight columns, I said 0.65. You have it, by the way. That's a generic graph for the phi factor, the one I gave you in beam design. So this will be 0.65. Keep a space before this one. Keep a space after the equal. 0.65 times 0.85 F prime C AG minus AS plus AS F1. And close this one. This is for tight columns. Okay? Now what's phi PN for? <laughs> Spirally, it will be the same, but the heat factor will be what, guys? 175. Times whatever we have in here. Same, but the heat factor will be 175. Good? Good? There's one more factor. There's one more factor. For what? Just common sense, as an engineer. What did I say? Axially loaded columns or pure axial loading. Is that something make you like kind of nervous? What if we have some kind of slight eccentricity? What if there's accidental eccentricity? What if the guys could <coughs> really, really have it pure axial? The code take care, of, take care of that. They're saying just for those columns when they are axially loaded, we're gonna have one more factor. So they multiply the strength again by 0.8 times 0.65 times this for tight columns and 0.85 times that for spiral reinforced. So they multiply it by a factor. What's this factor for? The 0.8 and the 0.85 for accidental eccentricity. And those are the strength reduction factor. This is the phi factor and this is the phi factor for that. But these are for accidental eccentricity. So when you design a column, that's you assume pure axial loading, sleep all your night. Because there is a factor, take care into that. See, there is, we took only 80% for those. And only 85% for those. So we take care of the eccentricity. Okay? It's there. And when we go to the second part, when we have interaction, when we have not only axial load, we have bending on the column. I'm going to show you how the code in these interaction diagrams apply this thing. So I'm going to remind you next lecture with these things in those diagrams. Okay guys? So this is the design. These are the equations. Is this hard to design now? What's given for you guys? In a design problem, F prime C is given. F Y is given. Covers, all of these are given for you. P U, given from structural analysis. Design. So this is known for you. This part is known for you, which is PU, the alternate. So look, what do you have in there? F prime C is known. F Y is known. What's missing? A G and A S. Good. A G and A S. A guy can guess a section. Let's say 10 by 10 inch or 12 by 12 inch and find A S. 
Is it like that? If you want. If you are far away from P ultimate, reduce it. If it's too small, increase it. That's trial and error. Okay? Or someone may say, okay, if I know I'm going to be square or rectangular, I will usually have a guideline on how much I can go in one direction, or do I have a freedom? It means I can balance any section I want. I can decide, I can find A cross then do any section I want. Okay? If it's a square, so easy. If it's rectangular, usually you are set, you are required, maybe you cannot exceed one direction, 12 inch or something like that. If that's like a wall, it's gonna go within a wall. You don't want this to be going into the room or something like that. Okay? So if you can guess, remember how we designed beams? We said let's assume rho equal 0.5, rho 0.005, from there we found B and it. Likewise, if we have a guideline on how much area of steel we can have in the columns, then we can talk, right? Okay. So what's rho minimum and what's rho maximum in here? According to the ACI code. For tight columns. <coughs> or for columns. Or columns. Rho. Rho min. Rho actual must be greater, greater or equal rho min. Must be less or equal rho max. Okay? Must be greater than that. Must be less than that. How much do you think? 0.01. Okay, good. Now, you should have in your mind now. Guys, what's rho max for beams? Typical, typical. When I say for beams, f prime is equal 4, f y equals 60. Anybody remember what's rho max? 0 0.02, 06. So just keep your mind, 0 0.02. Anybody remember what's rho max for what's rho, typical rho minimum for beams? 0, 0, 3, 3, right? 1.4 over Fy or 200 over Fy in the US system. One is the metric system, one is the US system. Now, what's row for slab, row minimum for slab? Remember, we just covered it the other day. 1, 0, 0, 1, 8. Okay. Here, row minimum will be 0, 1, and row max is 0, 0, 0.08. Remember. This is multiplied by what in columns? Now you're going to calculate AS, right? Do you multiply this one by BD or BH? BH. AS equal rho AG. In other words, AS minimum equal 0 0.01 A gross. AS max equal 0 0.08 A gross. In other words, one percent. You must have at least one percent from this area, those bars. And you cannot have more than 8%. That's too much. Okay? Just too easy to memorize. But usually, usually, we don't go more than 0 0.08, 0 0.04. Usually, we don't go more than 0 0.04. First of all, it's costly. Second of all, what's going to happen to you at the splice location? You know what's splice? Now you have the column, the first floor column. You cast all the concrete. You want to cast the second column. You need to have a splice between the reinforcement. Right? How much, by the way, the splice length must be? No, like three foot? At least LD. Remember I mentioned this in the development length? At least LD. The development length. And there are bars in compression. There are columns. Okay? At least LD. So if you have 0 0.04, more than 0 0.04 coming from bottom, then 0 0.04 coming from the top, you are exceeding the limit. So that's typically, once you, more than 0 0.04 is costly, and you're going to have a problem, you may have a problem at the splice location. Okay? <coughs> so that's, we have a guideline. What's the best? Steel is always expensive, guys. Steel is always expensive as a material and as a fabrication. As a fabrication, there will be cut off, there will be slices, there will be so many things. So try to minimize it as much as you can. I prefer 0.02. Up to you. 
when I design, I prepare from zero. So, in other words, AS can be, can be what? Okay. You're free. You can use point zero 0.01, that's up to you. You can use point zero 0.03, you can use point zero 0.08, that's up to you. Don't tell me which one to use. I'm telling you, the code is allowing you to use this or that, or anything between them. Okay? And, but what I'm saying is now we have a relationship between AS and A gross. So go back to your equation. What do you have now? What do you have? Replace this one. Or either this one or whatever you want. So replace A cross, sorry, AS with that, and you will have here 0.98 AG, and this one 0.02 AG multiplied by that, then you will find AG. Then balance it as you wish. Once you come up with the B and H, multiply by 0.02 to get the steel, how much area of steel, go to the table of the parts and pick the best or the most, the closest bar combination. That will give you this. Good? But there has to be a minimum of four bars no matter what we need. For any rectangular yeah. or square cross section, a minimum of four bars are required. Any circular column that's spirally reinforced must have at least six bars. My question is do they have to all be the same size? Usually, yes. Okay. Yep. Usually, yes. Hey guys. For spiral reinforced column, minimum number of bars is six. For circular, for uh, rectangular or square columns, minimum number of bars is four. One in each corner. Good. Now let's talk about the ties. Now we know how to design now those longitudinal bars and the area. I'm gonna take example in a minute. Let's talk about the ties. What should we use for the ties? What size do you think? Number three or four. Okay, either number three or number four. Those are easy to build. Ties. Number three for what? For number ten longitudinal bars or smaller. If the longitudinal bars are number 10, number 9, 8, 7, 6, whatever, use number 3. Okay? Or number 4, this is the ties. I'm talking about the ties. These are the ties. These are the bars, the longitudinal bars. For number 11 or higher or larger. Good. Good. So we know the size now. You don't have to design it. We know it. Either number three or number four. Now what's the spacing? What's left for you is the spacing. And the spacing must be constant. Easy. Not like the shear stirrups within this zone, that zone, and that zone. This is just straightforward. Spacing. How much you think? The result of Three things. Three things. Straightforward. Any idea? 16 dB. What's 16 dB? Yeah. 16 times the diameter of the bar. The longitudinal. Or 48 dT. Diameter of the tie. Forty-eight diameter of the tie. Sixteen diameter of the bar, or the least dimension of the column. The least dimension. There is some of the three. Okay? And the last one usually comes. Let's just 
take, give, you, give you an example. If we have number eight longitudinal bars with number three scales, how much do you need? 16 times eight. 16 times eight parts, right? 16 times one. The epithel is one inch. Okay, so that's 16 inch. Right? How about 48 times three eight? 18. So the first one gives you 16, the second one will give you 18, and if there is dimension is more than 16, the first one will control. And 16, column of 16 by 16 is very strong. I'm gonna show you. Very strong. Did you crush cylinders in the lab in the materials? Mm -hmm. You did? No. Okay. okay. The six by six, you crushed the six by six. Four inch rounds. Four inch? Okay. What's the area of four inch? 12.87 inch squared. Okay, what if F prime C is 4,000? Or 4 KSI? 4 times 12? 48 kip. That tiny little cylinder, made of concrete only, give you 48 kip. You know what's 48 kip? You know how much 48 kip? You know what's a ton? By the way, I should talk, you guys don't know the ton. 2 kips. 2 kips in the US system. In the, in the international system, what's the ton? Thousand kilograms. Thousand kilograms, which is, which is, to get the newton, the kilogram, multiply by g, right? Which okay. is ten, right? So it's ten kilonewtons. Okay, it's easy. Is that hard? It's easy. You should know the ton, guys. Two thousand pound or two keg or. 1,000 kilogram, which is 10 kilonewton. 10,000 newton, which is 10 kilonewton. You know a meter cube of water? It's a ton. It's a ton. A meter. Okay. Okay, that's the ties. How about the spiral? The spiral design is straightforward, as I told you. It should be 3 eighths diameter. It's a smooth, by the way, these ties are deformed ties. These ties must be deformed with the deformation. In the regular bar, with the deformed bars, I'm not going to say not smooth. But the spiral is usually smooth, the diameter of three eighths of an inch. Smooth. Why? Because we usually, this is like continuous spiral. Usually, you know how they do it? They have the distance this. Whatever turn they want, this size. Then they should have like a tube or a shaft, and they turn it all around. A machine will do all of that. Then they just will open it for any spacing they want. The maximum is how much? Three inch. The space between two turns, called the pitch distance. Three inch. The smallest one inch. The clear. I'm talking about the clear. And usually, sometimes, oh, this one inch cannot be achieved if the aggregate size is more than one inch. Okay, but in the typical situations, one to three. Okay, what's the diameter? Three eighths of an inch. Straightforward. Okay, full design. How many bars we should have in a spiral reinforced? Six, six bars. Now, what if you are doing circular column with ties? Ties, not continuous spiral. When I say ties, look, guys. Ties means individual pieces. When I say continuous spiral, you talk about this. That's not like that, you're gonna go this way. It's continuous. Okay, that's a spiral. If we have this one with circular columns, what's the spacing between them? This. Whenever you say they are ties, this. Whenever you say they are spirally, that. I see why the ties don't contribute any strength. Wouldn't the spiral contribute additional much? Of that's why we have 175, the heat factor, okay. and 185. That's a huge, by the way. Yeah. 175 to 165 is a big number. Yeah. Try to divide it, it's a big number. Multiply 175 times 185 divided by 165 times 0.8, you see the difference. How much? 175 times 185 divided by 165 times 0.8. These are the factors, right? 122%. So 22% more just in safety. Just how much the code gives safety. 
dopamine that's intense, stronger or not. This is just safety factor. Okay? So they are more confident with the spiral reinforced. Okay? Now one more requirement before I start with the example. For the bars. What if we have the following cross section of a column? That's a huge column, but just for the exam, just to let you to show you what a point, something in the point. Okay? Something important. So we have a bar at each corner, right? And we have the tie. Is this tie enough? See these bars in here in the middle? See them? Mm -hmm. There's a check for those. There's a check for those. The code says, no bar. Okay, come on. The following. It says, any bar that's far more than six inch from the first neighbor bar that's laterally confined should have its own confinement in both directions. Let me just explain it to you. Are those bars confined in both directions? Yes. You have the time. Those bars in one direction. What's the neighbor part to this? This or that? You join, you put it in the middle. Right? If you have more than that, then you will convert it to the other one. The code says if this clear distance between this and that is greater than 6 inch, you must confine this one in the other direction. And let's check it. Assume a cover to the center of the bar equal 2.5 inch. Go up to the center of the bar, 2.5 inch. We have 30 minus 2.5 from here and 2.5 from here. That's 25, right? Divided by 2. And these bars, assume them. Look, these bars assume number 8. Okay? Assume number 8. And we know the scale of number 3. So we said 30 minus 5, that's 25. Divided by 2, 12 and a half. That's the center to center. I'm talking about the clear. Minus one inch, which is half the bar and half the bar. The distance is, the clear distance is 11 and a half. So this bar must have its own confinement. We do this. One more time in this direction. Good? One more time for this one. It needs confinement. If this distance between this one and the closest bar that's confined, is this than 6 inch? You don't have to do it. Like if there is a bar in here. If there is a bar in here. Let's check. 20 minus 5. 15, right? 20 minus 5 is how much? 15. Divided by 2. 7 and a half. Minus half. 6 and a half. They're clear, right? So it needs confinement. This one needs confinement too. Here. So we provide this one. Right? We provide this one. Because the distance between this and that, with these dimensions, they are huge. The clear distance is more than 60. This is what you need to know. If the clear distance between any bar and the closest bar to it that's confined in both directions is more than 6 inch, that bar needs to, to be confined in both directions. Good? Now, you like it this way? It's fine. Looks good. Some guys may do it this way.
they may do it this way. Now this is confined. This is confined. This is confined. This is confined. Right? They may do it this way. Will the code allow that? Of course. Given that this one is what? This or equal, how much do you think? You can confine this way, but the angle of confinement must not exceed 135. Otherwise, it becomes flat. It's not effective. Hey guys, this is all what you need to know about the ties and the confinement and all of that. As we go with the examples, we're going to apply or check all of these things. These are just checked. These are detailing things. Code requirement. Not design. Has nothing to do with the strength. This is just code requirement to ensure the integrity of the column. To ensure that the column will develop its full capacity before buckling or failure of any of these things. Okay? Let's take an example. <clears throat> Let's take the following example, which is your project. What's our fancy? I gave you that project. Four thousand pieces. Then we have twelve story building. The dimensions in each direction were 150 feet by 100, right? These are the dimensions. What's a prime scene? 4 KSI. What's a fine? 60 KSI. So this is what we have. Before we go into here, this is. I want to see how you guys did it. So we will have this is the 150 and this is the 100. We will have a column. I said those are square columns, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the class project. This is the class project. We have a column here. So this distance is how much? 100 feet. And this one? 150 feet. What did you do? What's the space of the columns you use in this direction? 20. So you had five spacing in this direction? So five. Five at 20. We have five spacing at 20. Right? How about this direction? 30. So how many spacing will have? Same? So you guys use 5 and 30? Is it 30 or 25? I use 30. That's fine. You can use whatever you want. It's up to you. So this is, these are your beams. Some will be one direction, one span will be the beams, the other span will be what? The girders. Right? Then we have columns here. I said all the internal are, are circular. We require these to be circular columns. And we said those, the corner one must be square and the perimeter one to be rectangular. Is that what I said in the statement? I thought they were all square. All square? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. 
That's one. So this is 30 and this is 20. Which one you had the girdle in which direction? You give the girdles to be, now remember, you need to have the floor beams. In which direction you had the floor beams? So the length of the floor means this direction or that direction? Yeah. So let's do this. So these are your floor beams? Yes. Austin. So Austin had the floor beams to be 30 foot long and the gear does now to be 20 foot long. You can have either way, you will be able to design it. But usually the load on the girders, it is much higher than the load in the floor beams. So we like to have the shorter span for the girders, the 20. Whereas the floor beams, lighter load, it span them more. Not only that, if you had them in the other direction, the floor beams, you have to have two of them. So the spacing between them is 10 foot. Okay, so this is your slab now, going this way. The slab is supported by the floor beams. So what's the length of your slab? Slab, how much? 100. 10 foot, the span. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, that's your slab. There's no 100 slab, 100 feet slab. The slab is supported with the beams. Okay, so your slab will look like this. Whatever. 10 of them. Okay? That's your slab. This is the beam. This is the beam. What's the controlling one? This slab is the last one at the edge, one edge continuous. Right? And the code says, I just covered that in table 7.1, says, which is according to the ACI code, the depth of this slab must be L over 24. If it's simply supported L over 20. But L over 24. Right? So that deflection must, you don't have to check the deflection. This will give you what? 120 divided by? 24. That's 5 inch. Okay, that's 5 inch. Then you use the same. You don't change this one, you say this is 2 inch continuous all over 28. No, use the same thickness. Everywhere. The reinforcement will change. The reinforcement will change. So that's the slab. 5 inch. Okay? Five inch slab, that's what you need. If you use eight, spacing between the beams, if you only use eight or whatever for those who use 24 or 25, then just divide by the number in here. That's the slab design. Then calculate the moments from the coefficient. I'll show you maybe in this lecture what are the coefficients for the moments. Then design. You may need the minimum reinforcement everywhere for the slabs. Good? But that's the slab. Five inch. Why I need the slab? For the cell foot. So for each corner, I'm going to design this column, the corner column. What's the tributary area for this column? This. This column is in charge of this. This column is in charge of this, this one. Then the middle one will carry the most. But I'm going to design this one, then I may design this one to be circular in a minute. Okay? Don't we want to design one that's not the corner because it's got a greater tributary area? This has its own. Those four, they have oh. the same cross section. This would have different cross section. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you don't do this for everything. No, that's right. But a design. The corners will have the same. Yeah. Whatever, you, usually you group the load on the columns. For the close group loading, those one group. Then the higher loading, that's another group. Usually you have a range, let's say within 20 kip columns, the same cross section and so on. Okay, so that's our plan view. So let's see what's what the tributary area for this column. 150, right? Which is 15 by 10. So the tributary area is equal how much? 150 foot square. This is for the loading. I'm trying to calculate the load first. The live load is given, right? 100 PSF. How much? It depends on the story. From, from what? Um, I think it's 120 from what? 
Okay. It's 100 from 1 to 6, and it's 50 from 7 to 12. Very good. How about the dead load now? That's not, that's not the dead load. Self weight plus 1. Exactly. Self weight plus 20 PSF. Superimposed dead load. What's the self weight of the slab? Now you have the slab. That's the self weight. 550 times 512. <laughs> 5 over 12 times 150, which is the self weight of the slab. So 62.5 plus 20 PSF. Is there anything else we add? Are we going to add anything else in the statement or just give you lump sum with the superimposed dead load 20? What's this number here? 82.5 PSF. You can say if you want self weight of members. The beans, the girders, the columns, if you want to add 3 or 5 PSF, not more than that. That will do it. But let's just take this thought. So what's the ultimate now? No. What's W ultimate on the slab? 1.2 dead load plus 1.6. This is how much per square foot. This is how much we have per square foot on the slab. I'm not talking about the columns. This will be 1.2 times 82.5 plus 1.6 times 100. This is four floors. One through six. This is how much? Uh, 259. 259 PSF. And for the other ones, floors, 7 to 12, how much we have? We will have 1.2 times this number plus 1.6 times 50. How much? per square foot. Times what? Six stories. Plus point one seven nine times six stories. This is BU. How many kids? Josh, are you okay with this? Yeah, I just was having a hard time right now. I got it. Can't come to the front if you want. Point one seven nine times six. How much? Three nine four. Three ninety four. Okay. That's this guy. By the way, this varies for everything. For the middle one, you will have thirty by twenty. Six hundred. This number will be six hundred. Times that. For the perimeter, you will have. 30 times 10, 300. Twice this. Okay? So this is calculated for you in the project. Okay? So now let's design. Let's design. Those, you want them to be square. I'm going to show you. Column design is, again, it's easy. You will see it. Use AS equal 102 A cross. That's what I want to use. There's nothing says other than that. I can use 101, I can use 102, 3, whatever, up to 108. This is what I'm going to use. Let's write the equation. Again, the one that we just created. We have 
P ultimate now uh, equal. This is going to be tight column. This is going to be tight column. It's going to be 0.8 times 165 times 185 times 4, which is F prime C, times A gross minus ST, right? A gross? Just do 0.98. 0.9. Eight, a gross plus sixty times one or two ag. I'm gonna read the things for you. Point a, a factor, accidental eccentricity factor. One six five, that's the v factor, strength reduction factor. Point eight five, a prime c, a prime c is four ksi. A gross minus area of steel, I'm going to assume area of steel is that. So AG minus AS is 0.98 AG plus, we're saying AS equal 0 0.02 AG, so that's 0 0.02 AG times FY, which is 60 KSR. The only unknown you have in here is what? Is A gross. So usually if you want, what's this here? Is that number, 394. So 394. Divided by those two numbers, if you want to get rid of them, equal this in here. You can add them. 0.85 times 4 times 0.98 plus 60 times 0.02. How much A gross here? From what's inside? Which is 0.85 times 4 times 0.98 plus 60 times 0.02. What's this number? Hundred? Yeah, no, four point five three. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Does actually. Hundred doesn't make sense. In the bracket, it's four point five three AG. Right. Four. Four point five three AG. Yeah. Four. So this is yeah. four. The maximum is get four. I mean, this is down four. AG. Now what's AG, guys? Hundred. 167 inch square. Take the square root of that. B equal H equal how much? 12.9. Uh, 12.9 inch. That's what you have. So what do you want to use? 13. Use 13 inch. So that's our Plus section. What if you want to use 14, by the way, just to look, make it look nice? Or what if you want to use 12? Increase the number of. Of course. I will increase all. Of course. Now you know what you do, guys. It's just look. You can. That's no. You know it. Now you know it. Now you can get a gross equal 12 by 12, and calculate area of steel or row. Okay. Or you can increase it because this is close. You know, you don't have to change this. Or you can go with 14 by 14, and you know you will use less than that. It could be like 0 0.015, which, or 0 0.018, and you are still fine. That's why I like to use something with some margin. I don't want to go as close as I can to raw minimum. So I can change whatever I want here. I can balance my section. But let's say we're going to go with 13 by 13. What's the required AS now? 0 0.02 times 13 times 13. How much? 3.3. 3.38 inch square. Go get me bars, guys. Go get me the best combination of bars from table 1 or table 1 will not help you. This will help you. How many bars you need from each to get that thing. Second table. What's the closest you have? Give me numbers. I need two or three designs. Let's say or two. You have anything close to this? We can just use four number nine. Four number nine? Sure. How much you have? That's four. 
That's too much. That's too much. Okay. About six number eight. No? Eight something. Six number eight. The options. Six number seven. Six number seven. How much? Three point six. Six number what? What do you say? Someone said 3.52, what's that? That was 4, 6, number eight. Yeah, you. No, that's for 8, 6, eight number 8. Number yeah, 6, number 8. Should be more, much no, more. No, no, that's 8, eight number eight 6. Number you guys heard yeah. that. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, okay, good. 8, number 6, what's that? 3.5. 3? 3.5. Very close. Yeah, too close. That's the best. Is there anything less than this by small amount? 3.12. 3. 3. 1, 1, 1, Wait. 3. Point what? 1, 2. You have 3.16. What's that number? Oh, yeah. What's that thing? 4, 8. 4, eight. four yeah. number? Okay, good. Look. 4, number 8 is saying, what's area of steel? 3.16. Very good. I guarantee you, if you increase this one to 14 by 14, this will work. You have to check it. That would be the best, but even cheaper than having 14 by 14 with 4 bars only could be cheaper than having 13 by 13 with 6 bars. Okay. Why I don't like the 6 in this kind? Because we're going to put the other 2. That's 4 of them, right? Try to have either 8. Doesn't matter, guys. Even if you put it here, that's absolutely fine. Or you put the other 2 here, that's absolutely fine. Why? Because we are assuming pure axial. How, where are you going to put them? in the direction of the loading. But in this way, you have a beam in each direction. Doesn't matter. Okay? So 6 will be fine. 8 will be fine. 4 will be fine. But if you had the, those two, it's obvious this clear distance will not be more than 6. So you don't have to have other time. So either you have 6 number 7 or 8 number 6. In this case, we're going to have 8 number 6. Okay? In number six. This doesn't work unless you increase the section. This doesn't work unless you increase the section. You can try it on your own. Again, this is guys, once you start your design for a project or for something, it's in a spreadsheet, it's a sheet. You do it right there. 14 by 14 and you have it. Couldn't we lower a row too if you wanted and make 1% or 2? If you do 1% you have to increase the section. If you do 4 number eight, you are decreasing row. Yeah. Row will be this mm -hmm. if you increase that, but you'll be fine. Do it. Do this divided by 14 by 14. 0 0.016. It's still good. That's what I was just figuring. It's still good. Now, look how easy this guy is now. Straight forward. Okay, the lists are off. The lists are off. 16. Time. By the way, those are what we said? 8, number 6. Those are 8, number 6. So this is 16 times 6 over 8. Or 48 times 3a, because the size will be number 3 of the tie. Why? Because the box size is this than or equal number 10, or the least dimension, which is 13 inch. So what do you have? The first one, how much? Four inches. First one is what? Is it? Yeah. One inch, or this guy is 18, you guys said? Yeah. 18 inch, or 13 inch, which one you pick? 12 inch. That's how it is. You say next to it, number 3 and 12. That's a whole design. That's a whole design. Um, what if you have a rectangular one? What is like the common proportion between the three and It depends. Usually, don't go less than half. But sometimes, it depends on the width of the wall. Okay, depending on the width of the wall. But not less than 8 inch. Don't go less than 8 inch. But don't. 
I, I know this is ideal, but as long as it's pure axial loading, the shape of it shouldn't matter at all, should it? Don't spin them somehow. Oh, oh like to buckle in a weird way? Again, we're saying short columns, but you do any look. It's, if you have eight inch, it's become look two and a half inch and two and a half inch the cover. What's left? Three inch to the center. You'll have two inch left. So usually that's the closest. Okay. Okay. You may have 15 if the load is really, really small. That's fine. Right? You may have not 15 inch, I say 15 centimeter, which is like six inch. That's absolutely fine. But this is for a small building, very tiny building. Okay. With no what? One bar. Some guys, you know, I saw some guys having like five bars. They would pick five bars. Weird thing. They would have this, this. This, this, and they will have a bar in the middle. I have no clue how they were going to construct this bar. <laughs> you think, I mean, how are you going to construct this guy? There's no way. You're going to keep that, that bar while you are pouring the concrete? Okay, look, those, the, the reinforcement, you know how it's done? It's done, then placed in the form. Usually they run like the, the ties, then they have the longitudinal bars with the required length, then they tie everything, then they place it with the form. Okay? Then they place them in the form. What are you going to have with the middle one? How are you going to tie it? There's no way you can't have something like that. Okay? Okay. So, I think we have like five minutes. We can do. Ten? Okay, good. So, it's good. So easy. How about the middle one? What's the ultimate for the middle one? So, you are done with the project. Six. 600 divided by 150 times the number. Circular too. Design the interior column, which is spirally reinforced. I want it to be spirally reinforced. What's the ultimate? Fifteen seventy-six. Fifteen. 76 Kelvin. We're going to use the same reinforcement ratio, 102. If you want 10, whatever, 103, that's fine. So, 15, 76 divided by what now? This is the 0.85 in the equation we had, and this is the P factor 0.75. Now, this is equal. 0.85 times 4 times 0.98 AG plus 60 times 0 0.02 AG. Straightforward. Okay? Straightforward. What's AG? What's AG? This is easier everyone, you just need the diameter. Once you get the AG, you just get the diameter, which is by the square work for. I got a huge area. There's something wrong there. It's huge. Yeah, the area could be huge. How much? 5.79. That's not huge. That's not huge? It's not. Okay. 5.79, just take, just to check your number, take the square root, if, assuming right. it's a square, how much? 24. 20, which is 24. Yeah, yeah. 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 even this diameter. Okay. So how much you get? Five? Seventy-six? Seventy-nine. Seventy-nine is fine. Guys, you see this number here? You not you don't practice on this one, you're gonna screw up this, it's this small multiplication. You wanna screw, screw it up. I don't know how, but try to practice. Try to practice. So D, the diameter equal. Oh, it's a circle. Yes. I was doing Circular spiral reinforced. That's what's required in the project. I ask them every interior column to be circular. D. By d square over 4 equals this number, get D. How much? 27. 27 inch square? 27 inch, sorry? 27.15. 27 inch. 
by 7.1, we're going to pick reinforcement more than what we need to make sure this is fine. 27 inch. By the way, by the way, this design is called what? Gravity design. Why? Because we are considering what? Gravity, Gravity load only. In your calculation, there is a wind load, right? So these columns, is there a wind? Did I ask for the lateral load? No. 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 You know why? And still I ask you for that. But this is what? Concrete. Reinforced concrete. Usually, the lateral load system is what? Shear walls. You mm -hmm. the lateral system is shear wall. In steel design, we wanted X braces, and the column are part of the X brace. So in that case, those columns must be checked for the load combination with the dead line and width. In this case, the shear wall will take care of them. Straightforward design, wherever you can have shear walls, you can have them. And do you want us to have a shear wall built into no. the project? No. Did I say that? No, but no. I didn't know if that was. No. Okay. 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 And usually, guys, again, usually, concrete structures are braced against side sway. Braced against side sway. Because concrete, we don't, cannot have too much swaying in the concrete. You can have avoid shear walls and have beam column connections or uh, uh, moment resisting frames. That's a complicated design. Okay? We're not done, guys. Please, just bear with me five minutes. It's not done. So what's your column now? This guy, what's the diameter? 27 inch. What's the required area of steel for this guy? Equal what? 0 0.02 times the area, which is by d square over 4. But divide by this area, not the diameter you picked, because the diameter was slightly less than what you need. 11.6. 11. 0.6 inches squared. Give me bound combination that that would give me slightly more than 11.6. You can have 12 number nine. Number nine. <laughs> yeah. That's one option. 12 number nine, and that will give you 12 inches squared. And the slight here, the slight increase would account for the slight 0.1 inch required for the D. Okay. okay. This is a spiral. This is a spiral. Continuous spiral. Okay. Like How much I have? It's like a clock. You just go one through twelve. That's not twelve, right? No, you need two in between each one of those. That's <laughs> all. Just stop, man. You said you need two between each of those two. That's not true. Between each four. Okay, start with all four. Okay. Start with four corners, and then do two in between each. Are you sure? No, yes. that's not going to work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, that's a clock. No, I just said. Oh, do we need to go? Yeah. yeah. So that's that's like, I thought you said one in the middle. Oh, no, two in the middle. There, that's all. Okay, so we're good. We're more than six. Right? Okay, so this is 12 number 9. What's this guy? 3A spiral. Right? 3 of an inch. Smooth spiral. Smooth, not deformed. Okay, at what? 3 is just going to one. I said three, two, one. Which one? It can be anything, right? There is a row, by the way. There is a row. I will tell you later on on how much that row. But okay. that row is sometimes not understood by guys. So the code said this is the design yet, right? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Read what's in table A.8. What does it say? No. 
Naozaj. OK. Cable A14. What does it say? A14. This table. It tells you what's the size of the spiral in here and what's the pitch distance between the sides based on F prime C and based on the diameter of the column. What's the diameter of the column? We have 27, which is in the one to last before the last category. You see it? Okay, so what do we need? What do we need? Sorry. What does it call for? Yes. You see how you read it, guys? 3 8 dash, that's the distance. 3 8 at what? 2 and quarter inch. That's your design. That will meet the ACI volumetric ratio for spiral reinforcement. That's the design. That's the design. Now you know what section to create, right? For the model. Did, you, did anybody reach this number? Well, we did. We just created another auto select for our columns. Should How much you would sign? I haven't designed it. Did yet. you go to 27? I, By the way, you don't have to. If you went like 20, 24, you will have row maybe 104. Uh -huh. Is it? Is it okay to do it that way? As long as you are meeting the code requirement. Okay. As long as you are meeting the code requirement. Some in the code you can say reinforcement to be designed. Then he will design it for you. Or you can tell him, I want that section with that reinforcement. Reinforcement, the column needs to be checked. So he will check it for you if it's good or not. Both ways, you can go both ways. <coughs> and we will talk about interaction diagrams. Now we have columns with moment. That moment either coming from the loading or from eccentric load. We will have an interaction. An interaction between the load and the moment. Then I will show you what's the meaning of interaction diagram and how we use these interaction diagrams. Okay? See you guys. How about you wait? Okay. Uh, this is more important for the design of the project, for the exam.